Ramiz Taif Alia pronunciation the 18th of October 1924 to the 7th of October 2011 was the second and last leader of communist Albania from 1985 to 1991 He was also the country's head of state from 1982 to 1992 He had been designated as successor by Enver Hoxha and took power after Hoxha died Alia died on the 7th of October 2011 in Tirana due to lung disease aged 86 Early life and politics Alia was born on 18 October 1924. His parents were from Gheg clan and they fled from Kosovo during the Balkan Wars. He grew up and spent his childhood in Tirana. In the early part of World War II Alia was a member of a fascist youth organization but joined the underground Albanian Communist Youth Organization in 1941. In 1943, he became a member of the Albanian Communist Party. He had risen rapidly under Hoxha's patronage and by 1961 was a full member of the ruling political bureau Politburo of the Party of Labour of Albania. Hoxha chose Alia for several reasons. First, Alia had long been a militant follower of Marxism-Leninism and supported Hoxha's policy of national self-reliance. Alia also was favored by Hoxha's wife Nexmaje, who had once been his instructor at the Institute of Marxism-Leninism. His political experience was similar to that of Hoxha, and inasmuch as he appeared to share Hoxha's views on most foreign and domestic issues, he accommodated himself to the totalitarian mode of ruling. <laughs> political career <laughs> First Secretary of the Albanian Labour Party After World War II, Alia resumed his duties in the Communist Youth Organization, and at the first Congress of the Albanian Party of Labour in November 1948, he was elected to its Central Committee and was assigned to the Department of Agitation and Propaganda. When he succeeded Hoxha in 1985, the country was in grave difficulty. Political apathy and cynicism were pervasive, with large segments of the population having rejected the government's values. The economy, which suffered from low productivity and permanent shortages of the most basic foodstuffs, showed no sign of improvement. Social controls and self-discipline had eroded. The intelligentsia was beginning to resist strict party controls and to criticize the government's failure to observe international standards of human rights. Apparently recognizing the depth and extent of the societal malaise, Alia cautiously and slowly began to make changes in the system. His first target was the economic system. In an effort to improve economic efficiency, Alia introduced some economic decentralization and price reform in specific sectors. Alia did not relax censorship, but he did allow public discussions of Albania's societal problems and encouraged debates among writers and artists on cultural issues. In response to international criticism of Albania's record on human rights, the new leadership loosened some political controls and ceased to apply repression on a mass scale. In 1989, general amnesties brought about the release of many long-term prisoners. He strengthened ties with Greece, Italy, Turkey, and Yugoslavia. A loosening of restrictions on travel and tourism resulted in a more promising outlook for Albania's tourist trade. Topic. Transition to multi-party system and presidency Despite Aliyah's efforts to proceed with change on a limited, cautious basis, reform from above threatened to turn into reform from below, largely because of the increasingly vocal demands of Albania's youth. On 9 December 1990, student demonstrators marched from the Inver Hoxha University, now University of Tirana at Tirana through the streets of the capital shouting slogans and demanding reforms. By December 11, the number of participants had reached almost 3,000. In an effort to quell the student unrest, which had led to clashes with riot police, Alia met with the students and agreed to take further steps toward democratization. The students informed Alia that they wanted to create an independent political organization of students and youth. Alia's response was that such an organization had to be registered with the Ministry of Justice. In his traditional New Year's message to the Albanian people, Alia welcomed the changes that had been occurring in the country and claimed that 1991 would be a turning point in terms of the economy. Despite positive signs of change, many Albanians were still trying to leave their country. At the end of 1990, as many as 5,000 Albanians crossed over the mountainous border into Greece. 
Young people motivated by economic dissatisfaction made up the bulk of the refugees. Alia was a crucial figure in the peaceful political transition of the early 1990s, as many believe that he helped the rise to power of the anti communist opposition forces, thus eliminating possible bloodshed. Alia managed to remain a key political figure throughout several political crises. Nonetheless, with Albania in the throes of a grave economic crisis, Alia had to face challenges that he could not surmount. After the collapse of a coalition government in December 1991 and the Democratic Party of Albania's DPA landslide victory in the spring 1992 general election, he resigned as president on 3 April 1992. On 9 April the People's Assembly elected DPA leader Sali Barisha as Albania's new head of state. Arrest On 21 May 1994, senior officials from the communist government, including Ramiz Alia, went on trial. Alia was charged with abuse of power and misappropriation of state funds, as was Prime Minister Adil Karkani, Deputy Prime Minister Manush Miftiu, and Rita Marco who was a vice president. Alia had been placed under house arrest in August 1992 and his detention was converted into imprisonment in August 1993. In court he claimed he was the victim of a political show trial and demanded that the trial be broadcast on television, a request denied by the presiding judge. The trial was monitored by a Human Rights Watch representative and proceeded with only minor due process irregularities. The ten defendants were found guilty as charged and sentenced to between three and nine years in prison. Alia received a nine-year sentence. A court of appeals subsequently reduced some of the sentences, notably Alia's to five years. Alia, Miftiu, Karkani, Stefani and Ize were also ordered to repay various sums to the state. On 30 November, the Court of Cassation reduced Alia's term by an additional three years. On 7 July 1995, Ramiz Alia was freed from jail. However, his freedom was short-lived and in 1996 he was charged with committing crimes against humanity during his term, and was imprisoned anew in March. The trial against him began on 18 February 1997, but he escaped from the prison following the unrest in the country and the desertion of the guards. Amid the unrest he appeared on state TV in an exclusive interview with Blendy Fevzio. In the late 2000s he was sometimes seen traveling to Albania from Dubai to give interviews or publicize his books. Death Ramiz Alia died on 7 October 2011 in Tirana from lung disease, shortly before his 87th birthday, according to a spokesman for President Bamir Topi. See also List of Presidents of Albania References Bibliography Alia, Ramiz. Yeta Ime, Kujaytime, Tirana, Tona, 2010 Sources Political Parties in Albania 1912–2006, Afrim Krasniki, Tirana, 2007 a External links Country Studies Online at the Library of Congress